Hey AP students, in this video we're going to discuss how to earn the contextualization point. You will see it on your essays, even in your multiple choice questions in a push. And so it is a very important skill to try and understand. So let's see if we can get a decent definition of it. So in a long essay question, even in your DBQs as well, your document-based question, it's about the first three to four sentences in your essay. It's the first thing that you need to start off with. How is it described, though? So it describes a broader historical context relevant to the prompt, basically background information. To earn this point, the response must relate to the topic of the prompt to broader historical events, developments, or processes that occur before, during, or continue after the time frame of the question. This point is not awarded for merely a phrase or a reference, so you need to be specific with this. I tell my students, use SFI specific factual information or your key terms. Be very specific with it because you're trying to confirm to me that you have a really good understanding of whatever the topic is at hand. For example, if I gave you this photo without any sort of context, no background, no nothing like that, would you be able to understand the circumstances of this photo without any knowledge of Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton? If you had no context or no background, you might think um, that these two people, whoever they may be, you may think that they're singing some sort of a duet. You wouldn't know that this is a politically charged environment and it's very, a lot of tensions in the air as um, they're debating as they start debating trying to, to um, become president of the United States. So without context, you could be in a lot of trouble. So what is contextualization? The first thing I like to tell my students is, you ever watched a TV show where in the first 30 seconds or so, that, that segment begins with previously on, and then they give you background information. What's key is they don't tell you anything about the episode that you're about to watch, but they do give you specific events that kind of set the context for what you're about to see in the episode that you're, you're about to watch. Also, the opening crawl line to the Star Wars movies, they do a great job of contextualization. They give you specific events that kind of lead up to the movie, but it doesn't give you anything uh, um, about the actual plot of the film. There'd be no purpose in watching the film if you think about it if, the, you did, uh, if they gave away all the information right then and there. And so that's also a good example. I tell my students maybe draw a circle on your paper or on the board or something like that and then maybe place an event in the center. We'll take Jamestown for example, the first successful English colony in America. Now what I tell them to do is surround it now with all sorts of key terms. All sorts of events and things that have happened that lead up to the formation of Jamestown. But what do you notice about the words that kind of surround Jamestown in this one? You don't see John Smith, no tobacco, no John Rolfe or Poetins, no nothing about Pocahontas, um, no starving time either. You're not telling me the story of Jamestown, what happened there. I just want to know, well, what are the circumstances that led up to Jamestown becoming a major uh, colony. And, and, and so maybe that gives you an idea. It's all it is is background, all in all. So maybe pause the video. We're going to analyze this particular quote here within the next couple minutes or so. But this is a very important quote in AP US history and just American history in general. But this is your famous a model of Christian charity. It was a sermon by a Puritan named John Winthrop. He was speaking to Puritans themselves on board a ship, the Arabella, headed to the New World in 1630. So maybe pause the video and read through the quote because we're about to analyze this a little bit deeper. So what would, what would historical context look like all in all? Up at the top you get several questions that you could answer. By far more students answer the first bullet point than any other. What's happening at the time of the source as they give that background information leading up to the document. So here's an example. Winthrop's sermon was given while on board the Arabella as the first Puritan settlers approached their new home. The Puritans facing religious persecution in England right there. You see how I'm qualifying this? And I've given you the background information. I'm setting the context. And you see that highlighted in yellow. But came, they came to New England to create a model religious colony, which is reaffirmed by Winthrop's plea for the settlers to practice Christian virtues such as patience, meekness, and then also gentleness. So I hope that gives you an example as, as to how we're being specific with it all. So use those key terms. Use the SFI, the specific factual information, because you're really just trying to confirm to your reader that you have a great understanding of the topic. So think of it this way. We just read a document. We just looked at Winthrop's A Model of Christian Charity. We have that quote. 
the background information. You're setting the context if you're doing these things. Here's some good starters, some ways to begin your thoughts in the days leading up to a model of Christian charity. In the days following all this religious persecution or, or maybe the formation of the Anglican Church, in, in, in an event preceding the document. Or again, in coming out of the, and you give me an event preceding the document. That is the context. You're not giving any details about the plot or the subject, just the background information. Here are some common mistakes though. So here's what's not context. So on the other hand, so you see how a timeline going, everything that leads up, that's in green, that's good. Everything that happens after Winthrop's a model of Christian charity, that's not really what I'm looking for with context. So for example, in the days following a model of Christian charity, now that's not going to really be a good example of, of contextualization. And then number two, following the days of colonization in the Americas, John Winthrop continued to lead his new settlement. Okay, we're going to stop right there. That also, you see how it's proceeding, all these things is proceeding. I want the background information. So again, that's providing details that give away the plot. Um, a lot of students just recap documents, thinking that that's good enough for historical context. I don't want a recap of the document. I want, again, that, that background information. And sometimes people provide off topic histories. I know for this particular one, a lot of people were bringing in um, the Mayflower Compact and then also um, the, the Pilgrims in Plymouth. Um, slightly off topic with that. So in the end, let's end with a decent example. I don't know if it's perfect, but a decent example to kind of end off this, this discussion. So in the days that led up to the writing of a model of Christian charity, religious difficulties persisted throughout England. The remaining Puritans in England decided that the Anglican Church as well as the Catholic Church were too corrupted to be saved, so they decided to venture to America. They wanted to build a colony of equal rights, religious freedom, and set an example to the rest of the world as a successful colony. So they are setting the stage for that particular document. Okay, I hope that this makes a lot of sense. If you still have any remaining questions, please feel free to contact me. I'd be glad to help you out. Thank you for watching.